was born, um, he had his eyes open. Oh, wow. Uh, the biggest thing was him not talking. You he know. was diagnosed as autistic, uh, level two, because three is considered, what do they call the extreme? How do, what is autism, you know? What causes autism? Because these are the kind of questions that I know, you know, the, you know, the average person would ask who doesn't know. King, it could be a king. I have fall. You know what I mean? In the medical field, they consider it as a disorder. But as a parent, you're like, if it's something that can be taught to the child, you don't see it as a disorder. This week on Hanala Conversations, I have a candid chat on autism through the eyes of a mother living with a son diagnosed with the autism spectrum disorder. She shares the journey to diagnosis, navigating a society that is sometimes insensitive due to ignorance and deciding to create awareness on the disorder. Let's go into my conversation with Kito. Uh, Kito, thank you very much for joining me for this conversation. Uh, you know, one of the things I like seeing is just how I appreciate people sharing their stories and how I view this as an act of service, you know, to what's humanity, because you don't owe anybody your story. A lot of people have similar experiences, but are sitting isolated in their corners with these. So I always feel it's great when somebody's willing to come go public and share because what it does is that it helps build a sense of community. It helps build, you know, a sense of like, I'm not alone for somebody who's sitting in that corner or just awareness at the bare minimum. So thank you very much for doing this. And thank you for doing this here on Hana Lab Conversations. Um, your story is a story of a mother with a, an, a child who's on the, is it autism spectrum? Of course, we're going to learn more about that, but Perhaps before we even get to, you know, his diagnosis and what that has been like, I think just tell him about, tell us about, you know, your son. Uh, get us into that. You know, when was he born? What kind of baby was he? What was that like for you prior to realizing that, you know, there was a few things that perhaps you could, you felt were a little abnormal. I, I'm not too sure whether that is even an appropriate word, but things that weren't, that kind of raised an eyebrow. Mm. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, my son's name is Gaona. Uh, he'll be turning four in a week, on the 18th, actually. Uh, when he was born, gosh, uh, I had a good pregnancy, uh, even though I was high risk because of my age and also my weight at the time. Um, I didn't have any issues, no blood pressure, and none, none of that. Um, so when he was born, he was, I was 41 weeks and six days. 41? Yes. Wow. My, he took his time. Yeah. <laughs> my doctor tried to get me to, you know, get induced. Buzzer, but for some reason, I felt like, okay, let's wait for him to come at his time. So... When he was born, um, he had his eyes open. Oh, wow. Do you know babies are like, you know, with yeah. eyes closed? For some reason, he had wide eyes. And even the <laughs> midwife was like, this dude is ready to see you. You, you know? know? And there was no issues. Mm. Um, right now, he's just the bubbly, ever fun guy. You know, outside of um, the spectrum, he's just the happy kid mm. who likes playing and running and loves people, you know. So he's a very huggy, touchy kind of guy. Mm. So, yeah, that's who Gauna is. Yeah. So at what point did you realize that uh, there were certain things that perhaps left you thinking, okay, maybe I should get this investigated. What were you noticing? Uh, the biggest thing was him not talking, you know. When a kid is a year old, they have certain words like mama. Mm. Um, even though it's not a lot, they'll have words that, you know, you can 
identify and say, okay, that they mean this or that. So he had no words at all. Mm. Um, when he was around eight months, he had a lot of babbling and was up to par with his peers. But then around nine, ten months, it just disappeared. Uh, he was literally mum, like mm, everything was mm, mm. So my mom at the time was like, okay, is there something wrong? She started mentioning it a lot. And for me, it was like, okay, no, I didn't, because I didn't think anything of it. Uh, maybe I've never really observed a lot of kids to say, kids are at that age, but so sorry, Balahakai. That's it. Hey. Mm. So, give a hell like a Simula observer started observing him a lot. And that's when, when he was about a year old, I went to the doctor, you know, one of his visits, I mentioned it to her. And so, when I mentioned it to her, she said, okay, let's start observing. A. Um, so that's how the whole concern started. Mm-hmm. A. And then secondly, I think with the fact that uh, at that age, he wasn't walking at one years old. But we know he's so don't worry. And um, partly I think the walker because he was on it a lot. Mm-hmm. So when he, when we finally got rid of it, because his doctor was like, Mm-mm. after a year, he should not still be on the walker, mm-hmm. get rid of it. Um, two months later, he was walking. Mm-hmm. So those were the first things that, you know, we really uh, were my concerns after it was mentioned to me by my mother. Yeah. Now, at that point, uh, is autism something that is even crossing your mind? Do you even know, you know, as a condition? What are you thinking, as far as, okay, you know what I mean? And what are the thoughts, you know, and what are the kind of conditions, if any, that you are imagining at that stage? Um, at that stage, I had zero knowledge about autism. Mm. Uh, to me, it was like, okay, he has a speech delay. Yeah. Yeah. So my thing was probably a speech delay, you know, the speech therapist, if at all it continues, then we can take him to a speech therapist. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm a believer in, you know, intervention is key. So for me, that's why I brought it up to his pediatrician and I said, okay, continuation. let's get him started. Yeah. So I had zero knowledge about uh, autism at that point mm. um, until later on when the doctor is the one who mentioned it. That's when I was like, okay, what is that? Mm. And started doing my research. Let's take us on the journey to diagnosis because you mentioned that at some point the doctor mentions it. So how did this then progress over time? Ghana were at a year old, right? Um, what then happens over time for you to then, alongside the doctor, to realize perhaps you need to investigate a bit more prior to even diagnosis? Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing was start observing his behavior. Yeah. Um, he was a picky eater from the start. Mm. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, you know, he's a baby. His palate will eventually get there. But um, she mentioned some of these things to me. Okay, observe what he's eating. Is he refusing a lot of things? Uh, In terms of play, how does he play? Uh, he's a COVID time baby. So the other thing was that, you know, he didn't have any interaction with a lot of kids. So 
the advice was start getting him around, you know, age mates so that he observed his play. And then things like his toys. Is he playing the way he should be? As in like, uh, if it's a car, is he doing the vroom vroom yeah, kind of thing? Like they would naturally do, yeah. yeah. So I started observing those things. But the biggest thing was that I realized he doesn't care for toys. Mm. He wants the lotion bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would have, I, use, I would get the camphor. Mm. Yeah. As soon as you're done with it, you'll get it that and then find true. another round bottle, something, and he would line them up. Mm. Hey, there's a position in the house on the couch where that's his spot mm. where he plays. So even up to now at four, it's now cars that he's into. But the toy that has to do it somehow. He wants certain things which are certain shapes. So his biggest thing is like round bottles. Mm. Hey. Okay. Mm. And now at what stage does he get diagnosed? And you know, what was the diagnosis? Okay, I think this is what it is. Um, he got diagnosed as an like a little bit after three. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not too long ago uh, because I had to wait for a while to end up getting the diagnosis because the local doctors are quite busy. Um, the ones that were recommended never really busy daughter. So you do wait for a while. But um, when you get the diagnosis, mm. it's, it's a observation sheet that mm. as a parent, you get one. And then the school also gets another one that you give to them to observe. So at this point, he was already at daycare. And so I was told, start observing him or maybe take videos, you know, of play, of when he's eating, like just everyday stuff that he's doing because they use those also as part of the evaluation. So I had the school fill out the form and then I also submitted mine. Uh, to them and the videos. Yeah. So that's how we ended up getting his diagnosis. Mm-hmm. And, and what was the diagnosis? Because I think at this stage, I'm also interested in, I know you are not, you know, uh, an expert, you're not a doctor, but sometimes it's really great to get to know from people like you who are experiencing it on the ground, right? What was the diagnosis uh, and, you know, how then do you comprehend all this information? Do you then do your own research? So perhaps just educate us now through your own experience. Yeah, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, He was diagnosed as autistic, uh, level two, Mm. Um, because three is considered what do they call the extreme end of the spectrum per se. But a lot of times they say don't do the one, two, three yeah. thing because every child is different. Yeah. Um, even at one, they have their issues. It ure level is can negate the issues someone else. Yeah, one. 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 Yeah, so he was uh, diagnosed level two uh, because even though he has no speech, he's mumbling and all that. Mm. Uh, at level three, we tell a lot how our thing they can speak very late in life, mm. uh, take longer periods to actually uh, get there, um, and then just the extremity of the behavior because it's not only speech socialization 
for a, their level of social skills be hakai mm. and then jone the issue tsa bo sensory gore gore o khona gore sa paro e be se mo irritate e le le tsela la teng e ke ke a botsa gore a ribua ka letsela kana khalara gore little things like yeah. that yeah. it could be they are hyper focused on the like only red mm. so everything should be red yeah uh it can be little things like they only want to use a certain cup to drink mm-hmm. with it mm-hmm. or um you know the basin mm-hmm. in the the bowl that they eat out of so it's very complex yeah, yeah. certain sensory elore for one it's more extreme than the next yeah. but then goyo mongwe their speech is advanced than the other a eh? but that's why they say it's a pre- it's a spectrum yeah, eh? yeah. because mwana mwele mwe is very different mm. from the next absolutely eh? so before we get to where he is you know i'd like to dig a little further from your knowledge your understanding you know how do what is autism you know what causes autism because these are the kind of questions that i know you know the you know the average person would ask who doesn't know king because you are king i have fall you know what i mean treatment the king is the cure so being somebody living with a condition myself i know these are the most common questions what is it what causes it what is the treatment and can it be cured so from your understanding you know in the most simplistic way possible what is autism mm-hmm. Um in the medical field they consider it as a disorder mm. uh because of Johnny, those differences get out compared to what they consider a normal child yeah uh but you know as a parent you're like if it's something that can be taught to the child yeah you don't see it as a disorder For me I'm like okay he's delayed yeah. but I believe he can get there. Yeah. Um the thing about it is that for so hela gore when as a parent we level la ya. Eh. So for me I'm like I know he will get there because most of these kids are brilliant. Mm. Like mm. you should see him on the laptop mm. or on the phone. So advanced. He's he's just like and you're like okay how did you know where to switch on the wifi blah 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 but it's just those social cues yeah. that he needs to be taught it's just the speech that he needs to be taught so there's no cure yeah uh, it's more of directing them to get where they could be i wouldn't say where they should be because yeah. it's unrealistic to think regards to our road of course eh? so there's no cure but with the right intervention eh, one can improve mm. eh? even those ones who are extreme uh there's still improvement in them kana the for me i look at it like he can't speak now but if there's a way he can communicate because yeah. what is important is communication not maho gore yeah. he can say bread or whatever but the fact that there's something that there's a way he can say it for me to understand eh which i think takes me to exactly what i wanted to ask where is he now uh you mentioned mumbling is he still mumbling and from a communication perspective is he able to communicate things with you that you are then able to understand okay hari ana ora boroto hari ana ora sisi hari ana ora you know emma um we're still at the early stages mm. because we just started intervention ka january mm. with the speech and also the ot occupational therapy yeah because ot especially because he's very hyper um they're thinking probably ADHD in there also yeah uh because he never sits down mm. he's very like energetic so i'm learning along with him for ngam to sayang to you know help 
exert that energy mm. uh, because as long as he's hyper, he's not able to focus very well. Yeah. Uh, in terms of speech, he has some words mm. uh, like mama, there's purple, you know, animals. He mm. can do sounds of animals. So for me, I came on instrument that thought yeah, since yeah. he started because I get it with repeated uh, teaching, then it it gets printed that okay, that's how you do it. Yeah. So it's early stages, but we'll get there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about you know uh, as a country you. Le- because how the country believe we're going too far, right here in Gabs, right? Do you believe, first of all, there is an understanding? The community, you know what I mean? So is there an understanding? Do we have resources in place, you know, to support a child with autism? What has your observation been? Hmm. Starting here, like a... You know, at a personal level, in yeah. terms of family, we are all clueless mm. before that. And even now, it's still a challenge, you know, for example, my older brother to understand his behavior. Yeah. So I have to keep reminding him, like, Muskaomana, because Mwana is energetic and screaming. Yeah. That's a way for him to. It's called stimming, mm. to self-stimulate. Mm. So you keep reminding because mm. as a community. Um, in terms of like other people, I'm lucky that, you know, his school, they are very open to learning on how to help him. I would say help because I cannot put that they're there to teach. Yeah. Yeah. So they're very open to that uh, because I had that conversation with them that this is where he is. I'm leveling with his other kids. And so they were like, no, for us, we believe that he should be with his peers as in like his age mates. Uh, If we see certain behaviors, then we can, like, you know, give him his break Mm. to be able to let off the anger. So they still teach him, like, you know, Mm. because behavior, it's not something you can avoid. As long as because a three-year-old, they'll throw a tantrum, mm. but the important thing is explaining, okay, if you are feeling this way, maybe let's try this mm. to make you feel better. Yeah. Like nowadays he knows the take a breather thing because it's something I learned to do with him. Mm. So even Gospolo, you know, they practice that with him mm. because the OT, as she's teaching him, I'm learning from her too. Yeah. Because what is the take a breather thing out of curiosity? Well, you know, when he's feeling overwhelmed or asking for something and it's like, I want it now. Yeah. Or he's upset because maybe I'm too slow <laughs> to give him what he needs. It's kind of like take a breather okay. and okay. do your breathing exercises so that it gives me time to give you what you need. Mm. Eh? So okay. it's kind of like learning patience. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. That it's not always going to be okay, I want this. It's already ready. Yeah. Eh? Because that's life. Mm. Eh? So we do that exercise with him and you have to still keep reminding him and then he will remember, okay, I need to do that to be yeah, patient. Yeah. Uh, if there's something I'm wondering, it's, you know, navigating the... Okay, perhaps let me start with in this day and age, especially back in the day, when I was in the challenge, I was 
everything. There is a name and a disorder for everything. You know, I think that's the fact. That's a fact on the ground. There is that perception. So how do you navigate? Because you touched on it when you spoke about your, you know, your brother. How do you navigate a world which believes we are getting soft and we are with gentle parenting, but to go and I have a root way. Thank you very much. Right? That uh, balance between now, this is a condition, it's been diagnosed. And uh, meanwhile, there's a society that says, hey, lava sing it. You know? I, I tend to experience that uh, with people if I'm out with him. Yeah. Uh, because one of issue issues if we go out, um, if there's too many people sometimes, uh, he'll get, you know, uncomfortable. Mm. And so it's like, I have to hurry and go. Like yeah. some days he literally will refuse to get out of the car mm. when we get to the mall. Yeah. And I can turn around and go home mm. because I can't force him to do what he doesn't want. Yeah. Um, I'll give an example. One time we were at... Uh, at a supermarket. I won't mention names. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so he's on the cart and he started getting agitated and I'm just trying to calm him, finish our shopping. So when we get to the till, he had one of those, you know, his bottles. Mm. He picked it from the shelf. So I'm asking him to give the lady ice skin. Ice skin. Mm. So he ends up screaming and... She's like, mm. you know, <laughs> imagine. So you're looking at her and him and you're like, he's three years old. Yes, he should be at that level. A longer, you know, society they see as. So I just said to her, you know, he has a condition, so he can't speak. Yeah. And yeah. at the moment, his level is like a one-year-old yeah. developmentally. So then she was like, hello, Rory Leng, and all that. Mm. So I just, I didn't say much, yeah. but I, was, I just said to her, you know, it's, it's a condition that he has. Mm. So sometimes be mindful on how you ask. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. Ask me, the parent. Yeah. Don't direct it to the kid. Yeah. And ask out of curiosity, not because you want to deem him a certain way. That's it. Hey, so... You know, just expanding on that, of course you are probably going to get unsolicited, unsolicited advice, you know, from people who just feel, oh, Mori, Mori, because Moro Bonnet is a case of junior who spoiled, right? So what kind of unsolicited advice, unsolicited advice have you gotten? And what is your response to such? I've had um, somebody say, why is he still in a diaper? Mm. Hey, you don't know my kid, you don't yeah. know me. Yeah. Uh, he's riding on the cart, you see that he has a diaper on. And the dude went, mm. and I'm like, first of all, you're beating the child yeah. for me. So oh, that's me. uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another time, somebody was like, it's like they'll go, you know, talk to, the, to him. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, I'm the mother here. Yeah. Kind of. So it's it's those things. Yeah. And yeah. at first it made me uncomfortable because I'm like, I can't have these things happen and say nothing. Yeah. So at the same time, I don't want to keep my child home. I was going to get to that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I just keep reminding people, you know, he's my son. So mm -hmm. if you have something to say or you're interested to ask, mm. like I don't, 
get angry eh, because I'm like, okay, this is a chance to, you know, inform one other person yeah. that there's such a condition. So I end up having the second guy, blah, blah, blah. I ended up having a conversation with him actually mm. in spa Rizama, along the aisles because now he was interested and said, oh, okay, no, mm. especially that mm. you know. Um, another time I was picking him up from daycare and one of his classmates, Marare. Mama, my friend, my friend is in the car, mm. <laughs> you know. So the mom is like, what are mangs? Then she's like, Kika on, Kika on in the car. They were walking to their car. We were already inside the car. Mm. So she came and picked in the car. But Zala, how are you doing your time? Kind of thing. <laughs> so, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, it will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's... It's only opportunities you can use for it. That's it. You know, have the conversation with people. And I'm actually wondering, you've already touched on how you then respond to it and that you then take it as an opportunity to educate, to inform, to create awareness in that moment, right? But what advice would you give to people, you know, where that is concerned? Because clearly, sometimes it's a case of socialization. You know, so it's perhaps it's also just a socialization thing, a cultural thing. This is really what we're used to. So what would your advice be? Because your child will, is definitely not the only one with this this kind of you know disorder, experiencing these kind of challenges, and of course you know a whole lot of other challenges beyond autism that you know. Uh, people are navigating with their kids and people just feel they have a right to ask, to comment, to touch, to, you know. So what would your advice be to society where that is concerned? What are the do's and don'ts according to you? Uh, my biggest thing is just respect people's space. Mm. If you have something to say, it's how you say it mm. that don't make that person uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, don't be staring to a point where you're speaking with your eyes, but you're not saying anything <laughs> in words. Yeah. Because it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. And at the same time, you don't want to be like rude and say, wow, so, yeah. so for me, to people is just, you know, if you're curious, you know, come by and ask. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. But don't be mumbling uh, because you don't know what people are going through. Yeah. You, you don't know don't. people's lives. So it's none of your business, but at the same time, because you're curious, rather ask. Yeah. And respectfully, eh, Guru, don't you are going to see with your eyes and say something. Yeah. Or say it. Yeah. We're all going through different things, That's but it. just respect each other. That's it. Absolutely. I want to probe a little further and, you know, sort of get into your struggles now as a mommy to a child with autism. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry to <laughs> no, take it okay. there, but, yeah, I'm actually wondering now, you know, as a mom, what are those emotions, those thoughts, those, you know, perhaps uh, a sense of self-doubt, self-blame, you know, that perhaps you had to navigate, if any, you know. So I want to take it a bit further, deeper into where Naya Anung is Mozart. When I first found out that he had this condi condition, mm. Mm. Uh, People decided to post they didn't, mm. you know, because I'm like, my age mates, they had their kids in their 20s. Yeah. I'm having a kid in my 40s. Is it something that maybe has to do with it? With that, yeah. Um, do I have the condition myself? Because apparently as 
parents to a child with autism, one of us probably has it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And then now you start worrying about what the future looks like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once you accept now the focus in now, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, I worry every day, <laughs> even the little th- listless things like, mm-hmm. If they are going on a school trip, is he not going to run off because he's somebody who runs? Mm. It's not that Obatlao Rana, it's just in him that exploring comes with running and seeing that and wanting to touch that, cover the area as much as possible. Mm. Um, so every day, if I'm not by him, is he okay, is he where, okay? Is he, where he is? Yeah. And then there's issues of what happens in the future. When he gets older, is he going to have friends? Yeah. You know, he's a sociable guy. I mean, at a school, what now? So, what they. So, I don't know why some are afraid of the movies. Give us the congeniality. But. It's not that he's doing anything different. He's just a kid who likes to play and energetic. So they enjoy that. Mm. But as he he gets older, is he going to get to a point where he's able to understand the social cues? Yeah. Because low-key, he still plays by himself. Of course. Mm. Even though he's around other kids, he likes... You know, if he's playing with this, it's his. Yeah. Uh, they could be playing, but he could be there doing his own thing. Mm. So is he going to understand that the interaction really bad to Helen generally in the future? Yeah. Um, yeah. Education-wise, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, Am I going to homeschool? Am I going to find a school? Like, I have no idea if there's any schools where I'm mm. staying. Uh, you know, they've had kids like that, and how have they helped them? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a worrisome thing as a parent. I can imagine. So, yeah. Yeah. And then something also that just came up right now when you're talking about him, you know, sometimes just running off because he just wants to explore, right? How do you then balance between letting him just be a four-year-old or soon to be four-year-old in a week, you know, and making sure that, you know, you you are constantly watching and ensuring that he's safe, right? And not just you, because you also then have to make sure they're informed and they need to, you know, so that balance, if at all there is a balance, how do you ensure that you don't smother him and you still just allow him to be and teach him a sense of independence, right? It's something that I'm just wondering. It's... It's very hard. Mm. Um, unfortunately, it has to be kind of like a controlled environment. Mm. Um, at home, it's easy to let him run around because, you know, you just open the door. He wants to play outside. But he still has to be in eye view. Yeah. Is he not going into the water tap? Yeah. Um, is he not touching anything that, you know, is dangerous. Yeah. Like I have a katkas tree. Mm. That's one of the things I worry about. Like I had a plant that I thought, oh gosh, that thing had the poisonous. So I got rid of it mm. because I thought about that. Yeah. Uh, in the house, you literally have to remove things that you know are potential danger. I guess I feel like an because. <laughs> I don't want him to bump into something and then it breaks and then yeah. it hurts him. So as a parent, you make those accommodations because that's your child. Yeah. Um, those things, they can come at a later stage when he understands that jumping off the sofa 
you don't do that. Mm. So until he's able to learn, you just got to accommodate that. Mm. Um, at his school, luckily they have a playground. Uh, it's enclosed. So when he wants to play, they can let him, but somebody has to be watching, you know, watching him. Um, the one thing that the OT has taught us is that you know, mm-hmm. watch him, let him try first. Uh, if he's having a difficult time, that's when you can offer to help. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I can imagine. You're like, you're old, Loroa, but then you remember, okay, don't intercept until he's ready. So that's just how I do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Emma. No. Okay. Yeah. Now, if there's something, and this is also something you touched on, I'd like us to explore it a little bit and perhaps you advise others in similar situations. Jaga wili khandela ba zwana normally ha o ka re ngwana re le mogoro ka re sengwe ha re se tshwara sentle instead of allowing them to assimilate into the society mo go ngibile ra mo hitla gore ra wa itse ra mo tsa re mma o ka mpa gara gore you know ra mo tswalla you know what i mean so and i can imagine we may not have enough kids who've been diagnosed with autism you just mentioned that could I possibly for possibly for generations we've had people who are autistic and didn't even know about it so what would your advice be to parents right as far as you know dealing with a child who or they already know is autistic has been diagnosed or seems like could have these kind of developmental challenges mm-hmm. um I think Initially, when you find out that your child has this condition, mm. you go through trying to find blame in yourself. Yeah. Um, but the one thing for me that's big is that do not think about batubatlari. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that se khanela batu to live their lives generally just you know thinking but what are yeah. so for me after you know going through the okay now what do i need to do as a parent yeah let me educate myself i still told myself my son is still going to be out there i'm not gonna hide him uh if somebody asks, I'm going to tell them the truth. Mm. Uh, it's not that I solicit the information, but depending on how you react towards him, that's when I will say something. So the biggest thing, mm. parent your child as for them. Mm. Because if you worry about... But what learning, you know, there are certain things that you're not gonna do because mm. Yes, our kids sometimes they have challenges in terms of socials, but they always need the exposure. At least let them try it once. So don't worry about that. How do you learn but what learning? You you'll be able to do better in terms of what they need. Because in the end, for them. Mm. Yeah. And something I'm also curious about is, why did you decide to publicly share your experience being a mother of an autistic child? You know, we bumped into you on, on, on social media, which really means you're doing a great job the awareness is being created and this is why then you're invited to have this conversation. So, you know, well done on that because we can only create awareness by being vocal and sharing our experiences. Why is it critical for you to be doing this, to actually be creating awareness on this? Because since 
is not just my child. Yeah. Why didn't I know about it? Because obviously there's somebody who's out there who's lived it, lived it themselves, or I would say living with it, uh, like that. Secondly, there's probably other kids who are also living with it. Why are we not knowing anything about it? Mm -hmm. So my curiosity to do my research, I'm researching, but I'm seeing, you know, articles from Mahat, you know, America, uh, the UK, whatever, but so then I wondered, is it Kanya shame? Mm. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe Okanabazwana, but they don't want to share. But how are we going to learn if we don't share? Mm. Eh. So for me, when I found out, maybe let me say something. That's it. Eh. I was hoping, secondly, to build you know, community, connect with other people yeah. that are going through it. Because I was like, since I know I'm not the only person, maybe there'll be people who are going through this who I can have a conversation with to say when I was very young ago mm, today. Absolutely. Eh, to kind of lessen the loneliness. Yeah. Yeah. And the isolation. The isolation. And, 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 you know, I can guarantee you, you will definitely get that sense of community. And I wish you all the best in that regard, you know, for you to find that sense of community, for you to find the sisterhood, the, you know, parent yeah, community, you know, yeah. uh, to navigate this together. And I think this is something that perhaps I could have, you know, explored a bit further earlier, but from a spiritual perspective, is it also because they were a community, uh, you know, from predominantly the Christian community? You find that a lot of times when we're dealing with, you know, things that we cannot explain, um, we either... Want, I'll just give an example. You are not praying hard enough, perhaps it's also a sign that we're listening, we perhaps it's it's some kind of demon. Or just the struggle with your relationship with God, if that's something that you've experienced. Has that been a thing for you, considering that we live in, a, even on social media, you talk about a condition, people, the first thing they see is, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but sometimes you find, you know, it's a struggle, you know, navigating these two worlds, yeah? It could be a spiritual thing, while on the other hand, on, from, on the medical front, there is an actual condition you know, it presents itself in this manner. So has that been a thing for you? I'm just wondering whether, you know, it's something that you've experienced. Have you had a spiritual struggle? Have you found that your relationship with God has been challenged? Do you find that people also, you know, uh, impose certain solutions in the spiritual realm? Um, for me, it hasn't been a struggle mm. because that I get to like our Someone is away to the room, would you? I get it. So, even this, it's not something I should question. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe because I, I live in the mentality uh, solution, <laughs> let's come up with a solution, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of thing. I can't get a good email or a carry. Question what a moody moo, why me? Mm -hmm. eh. mm. Because if you live in the why me, how may you dig into that hole? Yeah, or oh. feeling sorry for yourself, yeah, yeah. and not delaying or a couple weeks with the worry. Kika deraying, that's it. Eh. That's it. Get out of this is not a condition that Okarekamuso are holler, but 
at least if you learn what you can do to help, you know, wana ranza hola abana let's say the talkang. Can I wanna let's say you know the basics of life? Um Utlu Diana Kokahu Wara Kabu Kore not that there's anything wrong yeah. you know pray for your child yeah um but do what needs to be done yeah so now for me i've never had that and i've never had people comment saying you know me say yeah yeah but i see that a lot <laughs> you know i, I see yeah. that a lot when you know, in other people's um, pages or whatever. Yeah. But I was like, I was like, first thing I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, blah, blah, blah. Kinda. Which, which I think kind of also, without people realizing, it says you you have done something wrong or you are not doing enough in your spiritual journey, right? So I feel it's something that people throw without necessarily realizing that in the same process, you're not helping this person who's saying I'm dealing with this and you're saying, yeah, you know, but uh, let me take this moment to thank you for, for doing this, for having this conversation. And uh, the reason why I also didn't want to get too technical as far as the condition is concerned is, you know, of course I understand you're not a doctor. You're talking about your experience living with it, but also, you know, it's, through you sharing your lived experience with your child that somebody else is able to connect with you and somebody else is able to say, you know, uh, so I really appreciate that you were, able, you were vulnerable with us. You took it there, you shared, you know, what you experienced living with your, you know, your child who's on the spectrum is and really just simplifying it for, for us who are not quite informed and keep up the great work keep at it and I wish you all the best in, you know, your parenthood and may it be colorful. May, you know, all your dreams for your child come to, to fruition and keep up the great work. Mommy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, it's always a great opportunity to, you know, have one other person know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you know, people will, you know, touch base and say, I'm going through that, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's okay. Um, it's okay to be out there. Mm. I'm there. There's another parent and another. So let's build a community and continue to create awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, because when there's a community, you know, it's better really more than mm. really lose. Absolutely. And then it lessens that. Um, isolation. Hey, let's not isolate ourselves. Mm. At the end of the day, the kids are here, we're here. So let's build a community. Absolutely. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode. And don't forget to share, to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you'd also like to share your story, you can DM the Khauna Live or Khauna Live Conversations pages on Facebook or just email Khauna Live Conversations at gmail.com. Catch you on the next episode.